eggplant. Hi everyone, it's Carrie again, and this time I'm here to talk about optimizing your scripts for both robustness and efficiency. SenseTalk is an incredibly easy scripting language to learn and use, but there are still some best practices we recommend following in order to make script writing and maintenance as straightforward as possible. Script timing is one of the most important considerations for any type of automation, but it's especially critical when automating applications at the GUI level. To start us out, I'll discuss some of the strategies to make sure your scripts are sensitive to the load times of your application under test. If you don't properly account for these load times, your scripts are going to run inconsistently, resulting in false positive errors. We've all experienced applications that appear completely loaded but can't be interacted with yet. The app simply ignores the first click or keystroke you attempt on the new screen. We can write our scripts to accommodate this delay between the application appearing interactive and truly being interactive. Some app UIs also shift around as a screen is loading. Here are a couple examples. Note how as this web page loads, the elements in this area of the UI shift left. In this second example, the UI flies in from the side of the screen before settling into its final position. This movement can be problematic, as eggplant's image searches are quick and will often match elements before they stop moving and the very small computational delay between an image search completing and the click or tap being sent results in eggplant executing the event at the original find location rather than the final location of the element. Introducing a small delay into our eggplant scripts tells eggplant functional to wait a beat between the screen first loading and attempting to interact with the UI. There are three main features in SenseTalk that allow you to introduce longer delays into your automation code to account for application load times. Wait for, which is available both as a command and search property, the wait command, and the remote work interval global property. The more wait commands you execute against a particular screen, or the longer you make the timing settings for wait in the remote work interval, the more robust your scripts will be. But you also don't want to further slow down your script with these features without an associated benefit to reliability. It's also important to understand which events the timing commands and properties affect, and how they affect the events, so that you can choose the appropriate features to include in your code. The wait for command is a command that simply waits for an image or OCR string to appear on the screen. The time specified with the wait for command indicates the timeout the rough amount of time Eggplant will spend searching for the image or OCR string before throwing an exception. Wait for provides an additional visual checkpoint that lets you know the UI of your app is advancing as expected, without interacting with the app at the same time. Including a wait for command that searches for an element unique to a new screen immediately after an action that causes the new screen to load helps you confirm that the desired page did indeed load. Placing a wait for command prior to a command that interacts with the new screen also necessarily introduces an additional small delay between the screen appearing and eggplant interacting with the application, which can help the interaction be successful if the app does not always immediately become interactive, or if the UI shifts into place. The small delay introduced by the wait for command is determined purely by the amount of time it takes for eggplant to execute the image or OCR search performed by the wait for. This amount of time is inherently variable as various factors can affect how long it takes for an individual search to complete. One cannot assume that the delay is consistent in length or necessarily long enough to allow the app to become interactive or for the UI to stop shifting. The additional visual checkpoint that the wait for command provides is plenty of reason to use wait for's to validate a newly loaded page, but the delay that they introduce on their own might not be sufficient to handle the loading behavior of your application under test. The wait command is called a hard wait, and it simply waits the specified amount of time before proceeding to the next line of SenseTalk code. Wait is helpful in cases where the UI is shifting into place or there is no visual indicator that the UI is interactive, and some extra time is needed to allow the application to be ready for input. The wait for command is an intelligent wait, meaning that it adjusts to the actual load time of the image or OCR string it's searching for. 
the intelligent wait for can accommodate the bulk of the loading time at the beginning with a short wait command following to account for the final loading events that are difficult to detect or validate. Wait for is also available as a search property, which can be helpful when dealing with application load times. Here's an example of the wait for search property in the context of a click command. The value specifies how long eggplant will spend looking for the image or OCR string before timing out. As soon as the element is found, Eggplant will execute the click at the find location. Occasionally, we'll see users who've modified their scripts a bit like this, where they've introduced wait commands between a series of set interactions. Sometimes users do this because each event causes a new screen or pane to load, and they're trying to account for the loading times of each new screen. If this is the case, it's usually better to alter the actions that are associated with searches to use the wait for property which will then allow the wait to be intelligent rather than a hard wait. This way, if the application is loading more quickly than usual, the script will automatically adjust to the faster load times, completing more quickly. If you find that you need to introduce wait commands between many of the interactive parts of your code in order to accommodate the loading behavior of your app, you might benefit from instead leveraging a third timing feature, which is the remote work interval. The remote work interval is a global property that governs the built-in pause between interactions with the SUT, such as click, tap, double tap, or type text. This means that code that doesn't interact with the SUT, such as the image found function, is not affected by the remote work interval. If your UI is generally quite performant, it also might make sense to decrease the remote work interval from the default and instead leverage wait for and wait commands in strategic places where the UI's behavior demands it. The script execution time gained by reducing the remote work interval should outweigh the execution time added by additional strategic hard waits. However, more coding effort might be required to identify where the hard waits are needed and to add them into the code. Now that we've discussed the very important topic of script timing, I'll change gears a bit. There are a few scripting approaches we sometimes see our users leverage because they are simple to implement into the code, but unfortunately these simple approaches tend to be unreliable. The first problematic approach is basic scrolling. It's common for users to need to do some scrolling on their app in order to reveal an element they need to validate or interact with. The quick solution is to count the number of scrolling actions that are needed to reveal the element, and then include the number of scrolling events in the code. However, this is a very risky approach, as the amount scrolled each time can vary, particularly across different sets, or the element could be arranged differently on the page or within the list over time. Instead, we recommend implementing a repeat loop like this one. The repeat loop will scroll as many times as necessary to reveal the element, at which point it will stop scrolling. Make sure to add some error handling like this into the repeat so that your test doesn't get trapped in an infinite loop. Because it can take some time for the UI to stop moving after a scrolling event, I've included a short wait command in my repeat loop, which allows the UI to settle before continuing to the next image search or event. This helps prevent Eggplant from accidentally scrolling the element of interest off the page or tapping on the wrong location. Note how my repeat loop also has a wait for property with a value of zero. The wait for value of zero is a special value that tells Eggplant to scan for an image only once, instead of the default number of scans of seven when no wait for property is included. Using a wait for of zero for image searches, where the screen is already loaded and you know the image might not be present, greatly speeds up the execution of the image found function. Sometimes we'll see our users use tabbing to change focus on forms or other types of UIs. If the purpose of the script is to test tabbing, then this is relevant, but if the goal is to simply fill out the form or navigate the UI, tabbing can be unreliable. Tabbing assumes that the elements are all present, and in a particular order, and if this is not the case, the script will usually fail or create bad data. Instead, consider capturing images of each element you need to interact with. This ensures that you're interacting with the desired element, and the elements are indeed visible on the screen. Sometimes we'll see users relying heavily on coordinates when setting up search rectangles or even when clicking on elements on the screen. Code like this isn't usable across different resolutions or if an element changes location on the screen, 
and does nothing to validate the appearance of the UI. Try to set search rectangles based on at least one image, but if you must use coordinates, consider establishing the search rectangle based on the actual dimensions of the SUT, which makes the search rectangle more relevant across different devices and resolutions. In summary, recall how wait for, wait in the remote work interval can be used to control the timing behavior of your scripts, which allows you to accommodate variable loading times within the application under test. For repetitive actions, such as scrolling or tabbing, consider using repeat loops or clicking directly on the field of interest in order to make the interactions more reliable. Also use coordinates as little as possible when setting up search rectangles or interacting with elements to both validate the UI and get more script reusability across SUTs. For more information, see our documentation or reach out to our support team. Thank you very much for watching this video. We'll see you at the next one.